I don't know about you, but there have been lots of times in my life where I feel like something is wrong with me. It's like, why does everyone else seem to have everything together and have these perfect pristine homes and yet mine feels chronically messy? Like no matter what I do, there's chaos and I can't get on top of it. Something must be wrong with me. I must be lazy. I must be not hardworking enough. Like what is wrong with me? But over time, I've realized that I think secretly a lot of us feel this way, where we feel like we have to keep hidden the little messes or big messes in our home. But in today's society, realistically, I think it's normal to at times have a very messy house. But over time, I actually have learned little ways to manage the mess a bit more. But it's really about a mindset shift and a behavioral shift in how you're navigating your space and interacting with your stuff on a daily basis. And I wanna share those strategies with you just to make it a little bit easier. Because come on, keeping a house clean is hard. It's like I recently saw this reel, I don't remember who posted it, but it said, how to keep your home clean. You get up in the morning, you start cleaning, you keep cleaning all day, you clean in the evening and you go to bed and you do it all over again. You clean all the time. That's how you keep your home clean. And sometimes it feels that way, doesn't it? Where you feel like you have to be constantly putting things away, tidying up, washing counters, vacuuming, doing dishes, all the things in order to keep your house clean. But I do think that there are things we can do to try to get a little bit more control of the situation. Not that it solves all your problems, not that I never have a headache about my house ever again, but I do think that there are shifts we can make in how we think about our stuff and how we relate to our stuff and handle our stuff that can make life a whole lot easier. So we don't have to spend quite so much time worrying about our stuff and we can spend more time living. And I think the core issue as to why it is so hard is that there are learned automatic behaviors that are so ingrained in us that we've been reinforced for for years, our entire lives, that are very difficult to unlearn. And these behaviors that we've just done over and over again, they're so automatic that we don't even realize what's happening when it's happening. And let me explain what I mean. For example, the other day I was trying to charge my phone and I used this charging cord. It would just not work. I had tried it recently and it also didn't work. I tried to figure out was it the base of it or was it the cord? I realized it was the cord. It wasn't an issue with the outlet or anything. The cord was just not working. And instead of discarding or decluttering it, I automatically just started rolling it up and putting it away. And somewhere along the path from me picking up the cord to putting it in the cupboard, I realized, what am I doing? Why am I putting this cord away when I could be decluttering it? It is broken. It is potentially even a little bit dangerous. I've tried it numerous times. It does not work and I should not keep this cord. Like internally, what had happened for me in a very quick, automatic way is I had kind of told myself, okay, it's not working today, but maybe somehow it'll work in the future and maybe there'll be a day where I can't find my other charger and I need this one and I try it and it somehow miraculously works and then I solve that problem and so I'm just gonna put it back where it goes in case it suddenly starts to work again. But those thoughts that led me to want to keep the item, they were almost not conscious thoughts. It was like so automatic. It didn't feel even like a thought. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where it's just like your brain is making a decision for you and you don't even feel like you're consciously doing it. I feel like that sort of thing happens all the time when we put things away and we forget to declutter things. So I think a big part of making our homes easier to tidy, to reduce the mess and to not feel like we're so lazy is actually just to live with a bit less. But in order to live with a bit less, we need to change our automatic behaviors and therefore our mindset around stuff so that we can make smarter decisions in the moment and not just give away to learned behaviors that we've gradually developed over years. So to make this a little bit more concrete and specific for you, I want to give you a list of learned behaviors that I think a lot of us need to unlearn in order to be better at pursuing minimalism, living with a bit less, and therefore having a naturally tidier home. The first one is that when we're young, we're taught 
to want more and to want better. We're socialized to think that our stuff can communicate something to the people around us about our worth. We can also communicate our interests or preferences or style or perspective by the stuff that we have. And I think we learn that very, very young. I have little memories as early as kindergarten of envying other people's shoes. There were these certain purple jellyish shoes that were really cool that year and a bunch of other kids in my class had them and I didn't. And I realized, I learned that there was something social about having certain shoes and our stuff can sometimes communicate something about ourselves. And that lesson stuck with me and continued to play out over and over again in many different contexts. But we need to unlearn this belief because realistically, ultimately, when you actually have intimacy and closeness with people, what we value each other for isn't our stuff. It's our conversation. It's mutual understanding and respect. It's having fun, enjoying each other's company, and having the space to get emotionally close to someone and share things about ourselves and learn about them. And so we need to remind ourselves that our value is not our stuff. A second thing we learn is that saving belongings means saving money in the long run. But realistically, I don't think that's entirely true. So often, I'm tempted to keep something because I think it will allow me to not purchase it again in the future, and I feel like I'm being more frugal if I keep something in storage rather than having a need to buy it again in the future. And quite often, I never end up needing that thing that I kept in the first place ever again, but I'm kind of stuck essentially paying rent for that item by keeping it in storage. By having more storage, I need more square footage and therefore need to pay more in order to keep all this stuff. Storage does actually cost me money. The reason why it's so hard to stay on top of our stuff is that we have so much of it. And if we just reduced how much we have by a bit, it suddenly becomes so much easier to put things away because there's just less of it. And then even in the storage cupboards or the cabinets where we're putting things away, it's easier to put things in because they're not over crammed and we have fewer things to repair, to take care of, to deal with, to clean, to tidy, in order to clean. So I think the simplest solution to actually make cleaning much simpler and much more streamlined and faster is just to declutter and to live with a bit less. A third one that I want to share is that at least here in the US, I feel like we're implicitly taught that we should have our own of everything. We're not taught very well how to share or to rent. I feel like we learn this very early on in school where every year we buy new school supplies for ourselves. Each individual student has their own full set of everything as opposed to just sharing as a classroom as much. And maybe different classrooms are different, but at least at the schools I went to, it was always like every student had their own set of everything. And sometimes it was also like a status symbol. Like if you didn't have the cool markers or the cool gel pens, then you were kind of out of the loop. And that is something that we learned very early on and it continued year after year. And so I feel like recognizing that and recognizing the cycle of just having way too much that we've been in can help you overcome it and instead embrace the idea that it is okay to rent. It is okay to borrow. It is okay to buy secondhand and it might actually be better for us. A fourth thing that we're never really taught is to think critically about our objects. We're socialized to keep, to store things, to move things around a bit for organization, but don't get rid of them. We don't learn to actually eliminate things from our space. And I went through a lot of life just thinking that organization was about putting things in certain orders or categorizing things in a smart way, when really a lot of organization is just getting rid of more so that it's easier and simpler to organize. And quite often when we're going through life, we're not thinking critically about the stuff that we're interacting with. Like the example of the charger that I gave earlier, I wasn't thinking critically about that this is an object, I have no obligation to keep it, and if it is making life harder on me, I should get rid of it. Like if I keep a broken charger, what's just gonna happen is I'm gonna come across it again, thinking it works again, I'm gonna try it again, it's gonna not work again, and then I'm gonna have to deal with the same process all over again. And so I wasn't thinking critically about how that object is not only not helpful, but might be an annoyance to me in the future. And I wasn't thinking critically about how that object would fit into my life realistically in the future. I just had these automatic benefit of the doubts beliefs towards this object. I kind of 
let it have the benefit of the doubt in thinking that it might help me out in the future when really it clearly wasn't going to help me out in the future. And so I think we just need to have a more critical eye when it comes to interacting with our objects and realize that we don't need to give our objects the benefit of the doubt. If they don't seem like they're helping us that much, cut them out of your life. A fifth one is that we're often taught to learn that stuff will make us happy, belongings will make us happy, but in the long run, they won't. There can be these little momentary surges of happiness or joy or appreciation we get from getting something new. But the problem is that those forms of happiness aren't the ones that linger or last for the long run. They aren't the things that really make us happy in the big picture. Like how often do we sit down and think about what in my life is the thing that makes me the happiest? What gives me the most sense of self, the most meaning, the most joy in kind of that deeper sense of the word? And for me, I've realized over time, honestly, it comes down to relationships, that it's my relationships with my family, my friends, people close to me in my life that give me that sense of meaning and purpose, that bring me joy and happiness. And it just simply isn't my stuff. And sometimes it feels like my stuff is this sort of catalyst to strengthening those relationships or to making connections, but realistically, it doesn't really work that way. My relationships make me happy not because of the stuff I have or how I try to communicate through my stuff, it's the actual communication I have with people through conversation and through being in the moment with each other. So that is most of what I have for you. I hope that it made you think a little bit because I think once we start to realize how automatic our behaviors are, how quickly we make decisions about our stuff and our priorities, and we actually pay attention to those assumptions that our brain makes because of all this learning we've had throughout life, when we start to question that process and become aware of it, we can actually take back control and learn to declutter regularly throughout the day, feel motivated to declutter, and then ultimately live with a bit less and make our lives so much easier, our homes easier to tidy up so then we can get to cleaning them. And it streamlines and simplifies life in a way that I think is just so satisfying and ultimately brings more happiness, at least for me. That's about all I really have to say, but I gotta say on a personal note tonight, I'm excited. Andy and I are celebrating 15 years from our first date which feels wild. It must mean we're getting a little bit older at least. I know we're still young, but I'm excited we'll probably go out to dinner or something. I don't know, that's what I'm up to. And that's something that brings me joy and happiness in a real way. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. It's a great way to support the channel. So if you take a moment to do that, I'd appreciate it. You can also hit the subscribe button below for more videos like this one. I have a bunch of bingeable content and some playlists on my channel. So don't hesitate to check them out and to subscribe below for more. And thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.